despite being able to take their games inside for the winter, golfers still rather come out here as soon as possible. Earlier this week, the first sports writer state rankings of the season came out. Those told us something most of us here in the southern tier already assumed. Chandler says it doesn't matter where he goes, he's just ready to go and play football again. But many of us here expect, as well as the experts, that he'll go tonight in the first round. So as you can tell, it's a little loud right behind me. That's because we're about ready to shoot off some N16s. The Binghamton Airport may want to start working on more direct flights to Las Vegas, at least in the summer months, and no, it's not for my own personal pleasure. That's because this evening, the New York Mets announced they've agreed to a new player development contract. They look to make it number six to move up from sixth place in the Cubs standings here on Sunday. There's a lot to be thankful for at this house in Conklin. Go! They just have a little different way of showing it. Oh, I need time! I need time! And while playing football on Thanksgiving isn't anything new, this family doesn't cut any corners when it comes to what they call the classic. Classic! My wife and I have two big families, and we wanted to, uh, with everyone in town, we wanted to have something special that we could uh, do some activity. We're all active, and we like to have, uh, you know, a good time, and, and football was a perfect, you know, perfect thing for that. Ten years ago, Todd Carriam decided to get the family together for a game, but at that point, there were no shirts and no substitutions. We probably started with about ten. But it's turned into more than just your friendly Thanksgiving morning football game. It's incredible. This is the uh, Super Bowl of small backyard football games Thanksgiving morning in Conklin. On the line, the chance to relive the ups. That's a catch. Downs. Oh! And do a little smack talk. Right through through the Christmas season. As the turkey hits the table later on. Every year, um, there's a lot of... Uh, bickering about who scored what, what the final score is. Um, at, at dinner, actually at dinner, we do have some uh, squabbling about who won the game, all that good stuff. Yet the anticipation and intensity <laughs> all leads to. It hurts. It, uh, every year I feel like there's another muscle that hurts and I, I think that every one of these guys out here, regardless of age, can say the same thing. Defending state champs Maine and well picked up right where they left off last season, blowing out Marcellus in week one at the Carrier Dome. Today, though, maybe a little tougher test as the Spartans host two-time defending Section 4 Class B champs Shenango Valley. This one delayed 45 minutes because of lightning, but still playing in the rain and weather causing some problems for ME. The punter can't handle the snap ball, ends up out of the back of the end zone. That's a safety, folks, and the Warriors cut into the lead 16-2. That'd be one of the few blemishes for the Spartans on the day, though. Later in the first, Luis Yaceta back to return the punt, and he is dangerous. He starts to the left, and then he works his way back across the field, all the way to the right side, and he is gone. 90 yards to the house. He's a human highlight reel, and ME is up 24-2. The next drive, it's Yuseta again, part of that three-headed monster in the backfield, and he finds the end zone again, his third touchdown of the half, and it's 30-2 ME. And then you can't forget about the big guy, Nick Sorrenti. He is a big, big boy. Spartans run all over the two-time Section 4 champs, 60 to 9. It's a great experience, you know. At Alumni Stadium tonight, gorgeous sunset as Seton hosts Unitigo. Unfortunately, this one not quite as pretty for the home Saints. First quarter, David Van Alstyne takes it, and he is going, going, gone. It's like shooting out of a cannon. 68 yards for the touchdown scamper, and it's 7 to nothing Spartans. Next possession, Van Alstyne again on the option again, and he's gone again. David getting comfortable in the end zone. 14 zip Unitigo. Second quarter now, it's more the same. This time it's Tyler Butler on the quarterback keeper. Sneaks in for the score, make it 21 0 at that point. Point and just too much Spartans in this one tonight. 50 to 14, they top the Saints. Well, in the college game, similar weather threatening at MetLife Stadium today, but Syracuse had other things to worry about than just the storms. Try having to contain Heisman hopeful Matt Barkley and the second ranked USC Trojans. That proved to be the tougher of the two tests this afternoon. Jets QB and former Trojan Mark Sanchez on the sidelines, but it was the current USC quarterback making a difference today. Matt Barkley goes up top 
to find Robert Woods down the sideline. Those guys will be playing on Sundays too. 14 nothing. The Trojans in the lead. In the fourth, the Orange cuts it to a 21-16 game. But it would just be too much USC in this one. Xavier Gr Grimble pulls it in from Barkley, and he makes a whole bunch of cute defenders miss, and he is gone. That's the story of the day. Just too much from the men of Troy. 42-29, USC takes it. The Orange now 0-2. Checking in with some other college teams. Penn State on the road at UVA, up six, but the Cavs, Michael Rocco finds Jake McGee for the score. Wahoo Wah, the one-point lead. The Nittany Lions with the chance in the end. But Penn State's field goal try wide left. Virginia sends the Nittany Lions to an 0 and 2 start. Out in South Bend, Notre Dame facing Purdue. Tie game late in the fourth. Irish driving Tommy Reese finds Robbie Toma. And that sets up this the game winning field goal from Kyle Brinza. The Fighting Irish are now 2 and 0 with the 20 to 17 win. And finally, let's check in on some baseball. Yankees looking to keep their lead in the AL East. Bottom second, Ichiro Suzuki doing his best to keep that happening. He doubles, and Russell Martin coming all the way around to score. And it's 2 to nothing. Yankees looking good early. But in the bottom of the sixth, the Orioles strike back. J.J. Hardy off the big guy. C.C. Sabathia giving up the solo shot. The Orioles lead 4-2 to at that point. A controversial call late. And Baltimore takes it 5-4. to four. They are now tied atop the ALE standings. That's going to do it for sports. We'll be right back. The Yankees-Red Sox rivalry sparks plenty of debate. But in Enwell, two fans are brightening it up. I'm very confident, and uh, I like to compete. And uh, there's no doubt about it, my lights are better. It's sort of the Yankees than the Red Sox, easily. Two houses, two teams, one street, and a whole lot of lights. But it all started back at Halloween. Went down after he finished his stuff, and I said, you know, I love your stuff. And he said, well, you put your stuff out. I wasn't going to do much, so I put my stuff out. And I said, well, I got you at Christmas time. You know, that's my passion. So. The result, this. Light after light after light, brightening up LaRue Street. They were cool as two relatively new rivals fight the age-old Yankees-Red Sox battle Christmas style. I started out with just the old lights um, from the old house, and I had just kind of built off of that. It just snowballed. Um, next year, we already have plans to go even bigger and better, talking about a snow machine, moving lights, all the good stuff. And John isn't even waiting for next year. Oh, I'll find something for tomorrow. After we're done with this, I was actually going to go to the store and get more lights. Tonight, it's hard to find a clear-cut winner without being blinded by the lights. It's public opinion. I mean, I like his yard. His yard is wonderful. I think I got a little bit better on the house. Nobody's beat him. Nobody. Nobody beat him? Not even last year. But in the end, the rivalry provides a treat for all to see, a tradition they hope catches on. Hopefully it gets bigger and better. I'd like to get the whole, you know, the whole neighborhood involved. The Red Sox and Yankees may be far from midseason form, but the rivalry is even merrier this Christmas season. In Edwell, Travis Eldridge, Fox 40 Sports.